One pixelated man. One seemingly impossible mission. To build an epic kingdom of awesomeness. In a world where the only thing standing in his way is that only about half his viewers are subscribed. You can change this with the press of a button. While you're at it, you might as well hit the like button, if anything, for no other reason than the fact that this is killing my voice, bro. We've got a huge project to get started with today, so let's just get right into the episode. And if you didn't get the message, subscribe. Hey there, how's it going? My name is Antlerboy, and welcome to my Minecraft 116 survival world. This time, not coming at you with a time lapse, which I normally do, but believe you me, I've been getting up to things in between episodes, so let me show you what I'm talking about. First off, I've been in desperate need of a wool farm for quite some time, so I made a very small one since I'm going to be needing a fair amount of gray wool for today's build. And the gray dye is honestly way better spent on concrete, so this is an overdue farm for sure. Secondly, I was out of blackstone, another resource I go through quite a lot of, so I decided to do some debris mining, something I haven't done since the release of 116. My plan was basically to blow up a big tunnel and collect whatever blackstone I could find, so let me hop back into first person and show you what I got. I didn't even do a crazy long mining session. I think it was like 40 minutes and I ended up with all this stuff. So gravel is probably honestly the most valuable resource here because concrete powder is horrible to make. And <laughs> I go through a lot of coarse dirt as well. So it's just really important in general. And then all this blackstone, which is gonna be put to use. And I do have a little bit of a plan for these magma blocks. Some of you might understand where I'm, where I'm going with that, but I also ended up getting 50 ancient debris, so let's smelt that up. Listen, one of these days, I'm gonna have to make a super smelter, but that day is not gonna be today. So for now, let's just plop these in here and check on them when they're done. All right, so I found some gold and I had two netherite scraps lying around. So let's smelt this last one up and actually make some netherite. I'm excited. I hope I'm not the only one who finds this incredibly satisfying. 13 netherite ingots, that is not bad. I'm gonna put them away with the rest of my treasure, but I've got some big plans for what we can do with that netherite in the future, so make sure to stay tuned for cool things to come. All right, so behind me, we've got this huge empty area that really needs some love that we're gonna be dealing with this episode, but before that happens, I actually have something to show you guys, and if we actually manage to lob a pearl over there, oh, let's see if we can make it. Uh oh Maybe a second one will do the trick. Okay, this is actually right where I wanted to be. So after last episode, when I came in and put the honeycomb farm in here, I just got really excited and actually ended up interior decorating the whole house. Interior decorating is something I'm gonna wanna do in every single one of these houses because when the inevitable world tour comes out, I want people to be able to look into these houses and find fully decorated interiors. So as you can see, things have changed in here since last episode I added another one of these units one of the things I also did is added shears to every single slot in the dispenser which seemed to fix some issues I've had with the farm but now it is working swimmingly and producing tons of honeycomb basically everything is working according to plan yes buzz for me bees Coming up over in this direction, this is the alternative way to get up here. The front door is actually over there, but I have this little dining table and a little library for this home. And overall, I think this is a really cute interior. Added a little kitchen to the entry area. And honestly, I would love to live here and just sit by the fireplace because it is cold and dark outside where I live. Coming over this way, you can actually go upstairs to find where the people who are living here would actually sleep. My house here has a brick roof, so it's not exactly the thing you'd want to see from the inside. So I put in these quartz pillars and some purple terracotta just to make it look a little bit more inviting up here. And it's just a few places to sleep for the beekeeping family. Adding these closets like this is also really cute for interiors. Yeah, I just think this one turned out pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. It's a pretty basic interior, but 
hey, I like it, so that's what counts in the end, right? But moving on from the beekeeper's house, there are things that I want to attend to on this side of the kingdom, which is looking pretty bare at the moment. I've focused a lot on this side, as you can see, but what I want in the end is actually for huge mountains to be towering up over the land on this side as well, kind of like over here. The name of my kingdom is actually the Valley of Ventia, and I haven't gone into any of the lore that I've written for this place at all. Let me know if that's something you guys would want to know. But at the moment, it doesn't really feel like the Valley of Ventia. It's more like the slope of, of Ventia, because it's, it's very one-sided. So for this episode, I really want to get started on this side, and we're going to be working over here. And hey, you've seen the thumbnail. You know what's up. So ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, grab your drinks and snacks, and get ready for this time lapse. Let's just hop into it. Aw, yeah. The first part of this time lapse, I do some much needed terraforming, which I'm gonna have to do lots of in the next few episodes, so consider this a bite sized chunk of what's to come because the backdrop for this vineyard is gonna be massive mountains, which will require a lot of terraformificating for sure. Creating the main estate of the vineyard, I wanted something very grand, but not too much bigger or fancier than the rest of the kingdom. I'm using blocks that have been used in other builds so far to not disrupt the consistency too much, but mixing it up enough to cause some variety. I ended up settling for stripped dark oak, a recurring favorite, smooth sandstone, and gray concrete textured with wool for the roof with a blackstone trim. I've used all these blocks in other parts of the world, so I had to change up the shape and style to make the build stand out. So I ended up taking inspiration from Victorian and old Italian mansions and added my own touch to create this house and Honestly, I love how it turned out. The first idea I had that I really wanted to incorporate from the beginning is to have the entrance to the wine cellar in between the two staircases leading up to the front door, and the rest just kind of fell into place to fit that idea. For the back of the mansion here, I plan to make a garden on this land that doesn't exist yet, leading into a trail that goes up the mountains I'm going to be building, and in general, I'm just really excited to be tackling the other side of the valley, and my plans are just as big, if not bigger, than the side that I've already built. Getting to the roof here, I went with a new style that I really feel struck that mansion look perfectly, and anytime I get to use anvils for decorating a roof is a good time, is how I see it. A big building tip that you've seen me do in pretty much every episode so far is planning from the start where your chimney is going, but not just from an exterior perspective. Try to think about what you want your interior to look like beforehand and plan out what rooms you're going to be putting where so that your chimney can be coming up from perhaps where you're going to have a fireplace and a living room or large open space or perhaps a kitchen. I understand it gets to be pretty daunting to design a house from both the outside and inside at the same time, but it really shows when you put in the extra time to consider these things, you know? And it makes me very excited to show you guys what the interior I have planned for this place is going to look like later. Finally, we're getting to the actual vine plantation, and for a section of the time lapse, Replay Mod didn't want to render half the leaves, but hey, if the Replay Mod footage were totally perfect, that wouldn't be an authentic Antler Boy time lapse, now would it? The upside of this hiccup is that you get to see the paths being put in in between the rows of vines and the fences I put in to make it look more like a grape plantation. The row of cobblestone blocks you see dotted in a line to the right is just an indication for where I want to put a small stream coming down from the mountains. And once that's built, my waterfall in my nether portal area is going to make a bit more sense. I ended up changing the dirt paths to stone to not have everything be a brown mesh on screen and finally put some barrels of grapes in where the stomping takes place. Overall, there's a lot of work to do before this vineyard is finished, but this was about four hours of building, so I'm happy with the progress so far. For the rest of this time lapse, enjoy the jazzy tunes, and I will see you on the other Here I am, overlooking the land on my uh, balcony here in the castle, and uh, I think it's looking pretty good so far. This was sweet. And just to give you guys a little bit of context how long it actually took to build this, let me show you how much honeycomb we've actually accumulated during this time. So, yeah, okay, <laughs> I haven't even checked this myself. This is, this is a lot. 
coming over here. This is actually where I built the sheep farm right under the mansion. So let me show you how much I've actually gotten from this build. And I don't even have a big wool farm. Like this doesn't net you that much, but look in these chests, like stacks and stacks. This is just crazy. Now that we have our mansion built, I do wanna show you guys something over here. In this house over here, I have the map of the land right here. And as you can see, none of the stuff I've built right now is updated. So let me do that and get back to you guys. Updating maps has to be one of the most frustrating things in this game, like when you actually have huge maps. So I'm not looking forward to building an enormous kingdom and having to make a enormous map. But hey, you do what you gotta do. Eventually, I want to make a dedicated space to make a huge map because I'm actually outgrowing this 3x3 three three map right here. I plan on making another vine field right here, but I haven't built that ground, so that's not really possible to do yet. And I'm going to make a garden right here. Sir, could you please keep it down? Right here is where I plan on putting a church, and I'm deciding right now whether I want to build it on a 45 degree angle or just straight because... That's going to be a huge undertaking if I want to do it the uh, if I want to do it on the angle. And uh, I'm really excited to get started on building some boats down here in the bay as well. I've got some big plans to build a huge ship here out in the ocean at some time. And uh, that's going to be really fun. I'm just really looking forward to building some. I swear to not. I will. Anyway, you get the point. I, I got a lot of big projects I'm excited to get going with. Uh, let's let's just get away from this guy because he is he, he's he's making me mad. Now that's way better and a bit more relaxing than that villager over there. And this is exactly how I would want to wake up every single morning. Just taking a look out over the kingdom and maybe just uh, barefoot walking over here and stepping on some grapes. Hold on, you got to be barefoot when you do this. Give me a second. Whoop. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am running out of time for this episode, and if you stuck it out all the way to the end, you're the best, and I appreciate your willingness to put up with my antics, but until we see each other next time, have a good one.